Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're talking calabash pipes. Plus a pipe question on tasting and smelling tobacco. Uh, your listener feedback, Country Squire question fast, quick fire questions, and more happening right now on tonight's Country Squire Radio. Yeah, I kind of I kind of butchered that, didn't I? Ba da ba. That's rough. Just for that kind of evening, you know, it's okay. It's you know we've we've had some historically uh, we, record record technical issues over the last couple. Of yeah, weeks. last couple of weeks have been a little challenging. It's been uh, insane. Yeah, for a variety of reasons, but we're uh, we're here. We're here, and uh, and and we're recording and we are recording. Uh, supposedly, people can hear us, and uh, it looks like the uh, the equipment is is working. You can actually see our faces part. this this that's, week. That's that's well, depending on what perspective you're coming from, that's positive. I, you know what? Let's, let's assume that it is. Right. Yeah. It's positive for me, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do this. Yep. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Man, good evening to you, sir. How you doing tonight? You know, I'm doing well. It's been uh it's been been quite a quite a nice few days here. Uh, yeah. real, real busy around the shop, which Dude. is kind of uh, uncharacteristic for this time of year, but uh, yeah, man, doing great. Things are good. What's going on with you? I, uh, you know, uh, getting ready to uh, jump back on the road again, or actually hop in an airplane and fly away. Uh, I'm actually heading down to Miami first thing tomorrow morning. So actually, by the time the podcast goes live, I will be in the Miami area looking around for a nice pipe shop as well as Pokemon. Uh, ideally, <laughs> ideally, I'll find a, a pipe shop that has a gym like yours. Yeah, that I yeah. Can, uh, I know that's that's the thing. There, there is a Pokemon gym, whatever that means, right behind our shop. And so, uh, you know, I, you know, hopefully, you'll find the the perfect combination of these things in my Pokemon uh, and pipes, man. Who who knew? I who think knew that's that? a that might be an episode. Wait, no, it's not. No, that no, should be. No, it's not. Oh, well, the on. next thing you're gonna do is be like, let's have a let's have a Pokemon and tobacco pairing. That's a great idea. <laughs> It's a great. Idea. What what is what is That's the best terrifying. tobacco for your Squirtle? That, what, what? <laughs> absolutely wonderful. What did uh someone said the other day? Uh, you know the the hardest one to find is the um Penzance chew. <laughs> right, right, right. That was good. <laughs> you can't you can't ever find that. One. Hey, gotta smoke them all. Look, man, we've got a uh, great show. Uh, we have got some uh, wonderful news that's happening in the pipe community as yeah, a whole. Yeah, a lot going on here. Yeah, man, the New York Pipe Club is uh, having their eighth annual summer barbecue. Uh, that's actually going down this coming Saturday, July the 30th. That's awesome. So be sure to check out their website for all the details. I know that uh, for those of you up in the New York area, this is a uh, this is an annual tradition. I remember uh, the first, I guess it was last year was the first time that we actually uh, shared out that, that yeah. this was happening. Yeah. Uh, man, can you imagine some New York style bar barbecue happening upstate? You know, you know what? What exactly is New York barbecue? Yeah. Does New York have a style? Too? New York has a style. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not wrong. familiar it's... enough with with the barbecue to know. I mean, I know there's like you know people fight over this kind of stuff. But... Well, it's one of these things. I mean, it's not real barbecue because the only real barbecue comes from Memphis <laughs> uh, okay. or from Tennessee as a whole. But regardless, <laughs> and yes, Texas, that's what I said. There's so much hate think thought right now. Yeah, <laughs> look. All Wait, those... Hey, what's your favorite barbecue place in Memphis? Um, I know okay. both, both for those y'all don't know, lived in Memphis for a number of years and uh, got familiar with it. Memphis, of course, a uh, lot of pulled pork. A lot of right? pulled pork. Uh, they do ribs. Ribs, big big time um, ribs. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. Uh, and I've said this before on the podcast, but Memphis is really more about uh, dried ribs, dried rub uh, yeah. uh, barbecue. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, in terms of barbecue quality, it's about central barbecue. If you're actually talking about yeah. experience, there's, I mean, you, you got to go, go to the, the rendezvous, rendezvous right? Absolutely. Yeah, the rendezvous. So you uh, and I, even in stores down here, uh, you know, a lot of times you can find the rendezvous seasoning that they bottle up and then sell it, uh, you know, the grocery store which is kind of cool man speaking of stores uh your store kind of uh, had a baptism uh Dude. of sorts the, over the last couple of days uh so so what, what day was this uh it was friday friday uh, yeah the, yeah, the official blessing of the shop yeah it was really interesting you know after our event uh which i'll describe in a moment but a lot of you know i had at least two people come up to me and mention like what other tobacco shop would would have an event like this like it was just a very strange kind of wonderful uh, evening that you know we're sitting here here in the middle of a cigar and pipe shop and uh you know and and we uh we had had this event it was really cool so um you know for those of y'all that are regular listeners you'll know that uh a, about a month and a half ago almost two months ago i i purchased the country squire from the original uh family that owned the shop and uh of course it's big time in my life personally and uh the shop you know kind of continuing on a you know its tradition for the next uh, you know, it's been here 45 years. We hope another 45 years yeah. of, uh, the, to, to be here. And um, so anyway, I, I thought it would be kind of a neat idea to have a an event where we just kind of mark the, you know, the, the just the new season in the shop, the next chapter, 
um, and, and also, uh, you know, just to be frank, just kind of, you know, ask God's blessing on, on our, our business and uh, the community that is here and, um, you know, the work that we do and the effort that we put into it and, and, and all that. And so, um, you know, it was just really neat to kind of to celebrate the Squire, uh, rally the community to kind of celebrate our community, but then also, uh, you know, just, just ask for, uh, you know, God's provision for, for the community and the shop. And uh, yeah, it was really, it was really special. Yeah, I kind of just really special. Described it to uh, my wife after the fact is it was kind yeah. of like a ribbon cutting meets a baptism meets a rehearsal dinner. Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. that yeah, kind yeah. of feel, you know, vibe <laughs> that was going on, and uh, it was uh, it was a blast, man. We even uh, we even got a chance to all share some stories about the uh, the squire and you personally, yeah. and and what uh, yeah that's meant to uh, various uh, clients and and friends and family. And speaking of which, I got a chance to meet your parents. You did, man. You did. They're tuning in right they, now. They they probably are. Hey yeah. guys. <laughs> Man, it was great. Uh, of course, um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Cole, uh, avid viewers of uh, Country Squire Radio, and uh, and now uh, avid supporters of our of our shop for a very obvious reason. But uh, well, they, they were before too. <laughs> right, but they're right, like right. they're really pulling pulling for us now. Right, right. Um, yeah. So it, it was great. Uh, you know, my the priest at my uh, Anglican church, uh, Father Keith Allen, he showed up, and uh, it was really cool. He anointed the door with with oil, which was really nice, and. Uh, prayed over me, prayed over the shop, and the, we had kind of a liturgy set up. So there was this responsive prayer back and forth between the the people that were here and and him, and um, it was it was really pretty special. So uh, yeah, it was very very funny just for a tobacco shop, you know, to have this thing. <laughs> I, right. I, I one of my best friends, Joseph, walked up to me, uh, you know, that night, and he was like. What he held up this paper that we kind of did, you know, did, used as this uh, service form, and he was like, "Who the hell does this?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "There is no other place in America that would do this in a tobacco shop." It was, uh, it was pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, just a uh, just a lot of fun times uh, here around the Squire. We're, um, you know, kind of pushing forward into a new season, and it's one of those things where, um, you know, things are going to be a little different as far as the feel of the shop. We've got more inventory now, and. Uh, you know, kind of moved some of the shops, um, uh, you know, furniture around, things like that. But the feel is, uh, it's just us, man. It's just, uh, it's just the shop. It's just the story. It's the community. And um, I mean, we, we ain't going nowhere. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Man. Yeah. I, yeah I was, uh, it was an honor to be, uh, be present for that. And uh, I did take uh, the liberty of taking a picture or two and posting that up to the Facebook and the Twitter page. So if you haven't yeah. seen it, just to get an idea, uh, you definitely should. It was it was a really special uh, occasion. It, uh, one one thing that was really cool, I'll mention uh, quickly uh, on the uh, on Facebook on the Facebooks. There's a uh, a group called the Reformed uh, Pipe and Cigar Lounge. Oh, that's right. I, I yeah, think, absolutely. It, I think that's correct. But uh, it, this guy got on there who uh, it, it was was uh, present at the event that night. He had never been to Jackson before and uh, or never been to the Squire before. Wow. He uh, just happened to show up that evening with a friend. But he's a member of this group, and so uh, he he comes in and like you know is just amazed at the celebration he, and then he gets online immediately and and, and uh, starts talking about it so I, I wake up the next day and I realize that I'm tagged on Facebook and I'm like well let me go <laughs> check out this tag and he's like he, he's in this group saying like man y'all wouldn't believe like this this shop like it's it's it was so interesting like you know that they did this really unique event and like and and uh you know it's just very strange but it was awesome and uh, so if you're ever in Jackson, Mississippi, like you ought to check out this, this shop. And, and then, uh, someone tagged me and was like, yeah, he, he's, he's on this group. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's kind of interesting, man. Right. The pipe community is such a small world. And, uh, and it was, it was cool to be able to make some of those connections, man, but, um, that's awesome. anyway, pretty, pretty special weekend. Yeah. You know, uh, someone who, who else was here and somebody who we really haven't talked about all that much. Uh, you know, you, you, we've, Dude, we've, yeah, we've been right. talking about the fact that you, you've, you purchased the shop. It's this huge deal. That's right. Um, you know, you, you have come into your own, you have maxed out, you know, you're, you're at max level here in terms of, uh, <laughs> in, in more ways than one, in, <laughs> in terms of your tobacconist, uh, uh, you know, level or, or title, whatever you could be. Uh, and you know, we've mentioned before that, uh, Tim, the, uh, the, the once intern, then apprentice, then, uh, God bless him. Then master, what what did we name him? No, the, he no, he was he was the intern and then the apprentice. Okay, yeah, all right. that, I thought, it was in that direction. Gotcha, yeah. guy. Well, before he could uh, become the master, he uh, he stepped away to uh, get married. He did, like you do, and uh, and move away, which is uh, sad. However, there was a hole that was missing. There was in the community of the country squire. I mean, a right. pretty sizable hole. Look, Tim is 
He's a legend in his own right. Hey, what other tobacconists can't smell? I know. Like that's, <laughs> and if you don't know what we're talking about, if you're a new listener, go back and that's just right. search Tim on Country Squire Radio, yeah. and you'll 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 hear his tale of being a tobacconist assistant and not being able to smell. <laughs> uh, yeah, for just as a kind of a short. Uh, overview, Timothy uh, Timothy Gatewood uh, worked for me here for three years now at the Country Squire, and uh, great guy, uh, seminary student, um, real you know interesting personality, very dry wit, all these kind of things, very smart. But he would pitch in occasionally on Country Squire radio, and and just uh, you know um, we got to know, and our listeners got to know some of his story and uh, personality and and all that. And uh, and so when he left, we we did we had this void and. Uh, we um we had to do something with it. Well, so you've got a new apprentice. I do. Uh, is he an intern or he's a, I like think he's an intern? Is he an intern? I think he's an intern. Okay, good. Does that, is that going to flow? Is that going to flow well enough with his name though? Caleb the intern. Caleb the intern. I can handle that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we got a new intern and it's Caleb. It, it is Caleb. Do you think he can handle that? Though? Well, that's the question. Because Timothy did chafe a little bit under the banner intern. But see, that has to be honest. That was what we made it so much <laughs> fun. Uh, Caleb, no man, Caleb, uh, your your new intern uh, slash apprentice slash Padawan. He's all learner. about it, dude. You know what I love about him is uh, he's a he's kind of a coffee head as well. You know, he's like really yeah. into coffee. No, and, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so he comes with kind of a love for both things. So I'm, I'm hoping at some point that uh, we can introduce Caleb to the world. Uh, Caleb, the intern to the world, is both a uh, <laughs> to, to back, I guess he's not a full fledged tobacconist. He's, he, more he's like, a tobacconist in training. T- t- yeah, T I T. How about we don't say that? Yeah, that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that. But yeah, no, of course, uh, yeah. C- Caleb, uh, the intern. So we thought that we uh, we should share. That, yeah, uh, that, you know, a there's, new a, there's a new uh, new kid on the block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll talk more about Caleb down the road. But Caleb uh, joining us uh, here within the past month. And um, he uh, originally from Washington State, moved here uh, a few years ago, uh, finished up high school here in the local area, went to Mississippi College for a little while, uh, and and now is working as a barista at one of our local coffee shops, but then also here at the Country Squire. Caleb, uh, since he was 18, has been a loyal customer of the shop and super into pipe tobacco and, and just the community here. And so I, I immediately... Uh, you know, knew when I was looking for a replacement for Timothy, uh, there will never be another Tim, no, Tim the Apprentice, no, I, I assure you. But um, but when I was looking for a, a replacement, I was like, man, I've got to think about someone that's going to have the passion for it. And Caleb just uh, kept coming up. And and even though I said there's going to be, you know, there will never be another Timothy, I, I have I have a really good feeling but that by the time Caleb hangs up his tobacconist apron, that uh that that there will probably be a, never be another Caleb uh, Caleb either. Yeah, so that's, that's I, I'm great, really man. excited about having him, and uh, and can't wait for y'all to get to know him <laughs> as well. I, d- I did tell Caleb at the uh, yeah at the at the uh, um, blessing of the shop. I put my arm on him. I said, "Young man, one day all this will be yours." As in, he'll buy it from you. Right, exactly. Yeah, Continue. that'd be it's great. The circle of life. <laughs> oh, this will be yours. <laughs> no, man. But uh, but it's good. We, we wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it because often yeah. a lot of y'all make your pipe pilgrimage down here to Jackson, Mississippi, visit That's the right. shop. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't happen to come by when John David's in, a lot of times in the past, folks have met Tim. So we want you to call Caleb intern. You right. can call him the intern. That's right. But don't call him Tim. But don't, don't do that. That's the thing. Like, don't be like, oh, you're Tim. No, 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 no. But do call him the intern. Let's uh, let's see how he goes with that. Speaking of pipe pilgrimages, too, we have had a lot of those in the past two months. Really? I don't know. It, I don't know if it's summertime or just kind of this. Uh, you know, it became kind of a viral thing. But it, yeah, we, dude, over the past, I don't know, two three months, like there's just this rash of. Of, of pipe pilgrimages. It's been awesome, man. People from all over have, have just flocked here and uh, it's been really special. So I, I, I did something, uh, you know, we had all these people from out of state that are visiting our shop and uh, you were so honored to have everyone come. So I, I, I went and purchased, I don't have it with me tonight, but uh, I, I got us a guest book, Bo, so that when these people come. Oh, really? Yeah. We, you know, I don't know why we never did this, but when these people come, like I, we can record kind of where they are and uh, you know, things they have to say and, you know, it just document because we just had so many people come through. Do you have quick access to it right now? Um, no, no, it's at the okay. house. But, right, cool, uh, cool. but I, yeah, yeah, that's something we'll, you know, it, it's just exciting where, you know, this has become such a thing out of nothing. It just kind of the pipe pilgrimage concept just kind of happened, you know, for people visiting uh, our, our pipe shop uh, nestled here in the south, even if they weren't 
uh, living anywhere close. And, and, and it's become this, uh, phenomenon. You go on Instagram and there's a hashtag Pike pilgrimage and, yeah, and it's, so cool. and it's all us, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all, it's all country squire radio listeners coming to, to, uh, enjoy, you know, a, a bowl with, uh, with folks at our shop. Man. And so, um, anyway, we hope to just keep developing that and, uh, and, and seeing where that goes. But, um, anyway, you're always encouraged to come visit us at the squire. If you, if you, if you can, and if it's an option for you, let us know that you're coming ahead of time. Uh, just so, you know, I hopefully can kind of clear my calendar, you know, plan to be here, things like that. But um, regardless, you're um, always welcome to to make your pilgrimage to your uh, your safe space, the country squire. That's good, man. <laughs> well, hey, I'm actually about to take my pipe pilgrimage up north in about, uh, I think, three yeah. weeks here. Where are you going? Uh, you know, I go to Grand Rapids every single year. Oh, yeah. And so, is it that time uh, of year again? It is. I think it's the second week in August is when I will be in Grand Rapids, kind of the latter half. It won't, okay. in, it won't interrupt our recording schedules. So that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, either a Thursday, probably a Thursday, if not a Friday night, yeah. uh, we will probably be getting the, uh, the Grand Rapids and Midwest, uh, Country Squire li radio listeners who are in the area and want to meet up, uh, hopefully going out to a uh, local pub, maybe one of the, uh, the tobacco, uh, tobacconists out that way and, uh, and doing a meetup. I would love to, uh, if you're out in kind of the Midwest, especially in the Grand Rapids area, uh, more details will be coming out on Facebook and Twitter and, uh, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a, we'll have a blast. Love those guys up there, man. It's, it's uh, a good group. Uh, at part time, try hard is already having funny fun with the uh, TIT. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Uh, comment, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, this, this is great. Well, I was going to point out. We'll just add this to Country Squire lore. It's fantastic. <laughs> this will be cut out of the show, but I was going to point out <laughs> that you actually have had uh, two tobacconists in training. You've got a nice pair of uh, tobacconists in training. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, and they, they it's are. a fantastic pair. It's a fantastic. Well, one of them is a little bit bigger than the others, but from what I understand, that's that's actually more normal than you might realize. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. So that's that's just the way it is. It's <laughs> the way it is. All right, guys, we have got a wonderful show planned for you guys. That was just for the live show, right there. Fantastic. <laughs> that is not going in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great show uh, planned for tonight, guys. We are talking a very specific pipe. In fact, actually, man, right before uh, we even kind of met this morning to review the uh, the notes for what was going to happen tonight, as we put a lot of preparation into every single show, yeah, uh, I was reviewing actually the last past couple of weeks, and it has been tobacco heavy, man. It's been tobacco, tobacco, yeah, tobacco, yeah, tobacco, yeah, yeah. Tobacco. And you know, the great thing is, you know, you are a big tobacco nerd. That's right. Which is a great thing. Uh, however, a lot of people come to pipes for the tobacco but a lot of people come specifically for the pipes isn't that interesting it is great yeah. man i'm i'm kind of one of those myself i'm i'm far i find myself far more interested in the pipes and the various shapes and uh the history that kind of right. surrounds the uh the you know what uh, each individual style and the manufacturers and you know we we try to from time to time take a look at various styles and shapes of pipes tonight we are tackling a very iconic pipe i'm talking about the calabash calabash pipes man yeah yeah, yeah. uh tackling that is uh is difficult uh <laughs> it, it's very they're typically kind of large pipes yeah but uh we we thought we'd uh take a look at this pipe uh you know just from a uh closer perspective interesting point you bring up Bo. i, I think you, you're on to something there in that um you know, a, a lot of folks do come to the pipe world because of the image of the pipe mm. or or even, uh, you know, folks that are into uh, carving and woodworking. A lot of times they just find it fascinating that they, you know, uh, would could maybe make a pipe themselves yeah. and, and, and don't even, you know, start carving pipes because they are pipe smokers. They just... Uh, think it'd be kind of fascinating to, to carve a pipe. And so they uh, get into it and then, you know, invariably will <laughs> try to, you know, smoke a pipe and, and, <laughs> and start getting into it. And I've met several carvers that uh, came from that direction. But, um, but yeah, there's something super, um, you know, uh, emotional about connecting with the right pipe and with the shape of a pipe. Or it evokes a lot of, uh, you know, emotions and, um, you know, thoughts about, uh, character and things like that. And, and, and I think the calabash is probably the most, uh, I, I don't know. It's probably the, the, the most, um, I don't know, the iconic, un iconic, u just unique of, of all of them. Well, yeah. you know, to, to quote a, a classic John Davidism, you know, when you're, when you're smoking a pipe, when you've made the decision to smoke a pipe, you're already making a statement. That's right. Uh, however, when you're choosing to smoke a calabash, it, you're making a big statement. <laughs> you, you are. You really are. Uh, Calabash Pipes, uh, of course, um, you know, funny name, and we'll kind of talk about where that comes from here in a minute, but uh, they they evoke uh, just this uh, sense of wonder and mystery 
Uh, they also, uh, because of their storied past, have kind of a, uh, you know, since it tied in with the Sherlock Holmes stuff and all that, that kind of makes it uh, just a very romantic pipe to uh, kind of become a part of one story. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, the Calabash pipe, they, um, Calabash, funny word, right? So uh, the, they're called Calabash pipes because the pipe itself, historically, uh, is made from a gourd called the calabash gourd really and so when, when you're talking about gourd you, you heard me right we're talking about a plant okay so this is a a plant that uh is basically turned into a pipe now you think like well why the heck would anyone even try that <laughs> seems like the plant would catch on fire uh that's right that's right but um uh, you know you think about okay if you're in a um you know let's say a you know small town in africa or the middle east or something uh you you find a, you know, repurposing uses for a lot of different things. And so with these gourds that are very common in, uh, particularly in Africa, they found a lot of uses for these gourds. And so you'd use them, uh, you know, for you know, bowls for, you know, either water or, or wine or, you know, some type of food, you know, you eat out of them. You could even use them, the smaller ones as utensils, almost yeah. like a spoon or yeah. uh, something like that. And one of the coolest gumbo ladles I've ever seen was actually made out of a gourd. Was it really? Yeah. Uh, that, that's awesome. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of different things, of course, can come from these things and, and uh, a lot of different things can come from these gourds. And, um, it's funny, even in Nigeria, it's known that uh, because of their uh, motorcycle laws, uh, you're required to have a helmet when you ride a motorcycle, just like you are here. And uh, they sometimes will let a, the, a half of a calabash gourd on top of your head uh, count as a helmet to get through. Uh, the legal laws, and so really? uh, yeah, a lot of these people will actually put, you know, they'll just chop off a gourd calabash and and put it on their head, and that, uh, you know, that that counts as their helmet. Correct. Is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, <laughs> it's just crazy. A calabash uh, gourd is not necessarily what what one would consider to be a durable thing. No, I I, I think it's just more for for show. Out yeah. of curiosity, <laughs> out of curiosity, right there is that a calab is that a calabash gourd? Right no, there? and okay. and actually in a minute I need to probably go get that. That uh one one of our uh customers, uh, Bo is pointing to a pipe in our shop right now that is made out of a gourd. Uh, but it's uh, one of our customers made that, and he called it a uh, a redneck calabash. So uh, this is a, a a gourd that's indigenous to the south here. Uh, and this gentleman carved a really long pipe out of it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that's uh, insane. Yeah, it's insane. He, so this is a gourd, but not a calabash. It, that, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And the, and the gourd actually grew that way. It's got this really long kind of stem and then the, um, you know, orb at the bottom that, uh, he just drilled out and made a, a pipe pole out of. So, uh, now that I neat. have it, it's so big. I don't know where to put yeah, it. Yeah. You don't even know what to do. What do I do with my hands? What yeah, do I do? Yeah. Right. <laughs> just put it there. It'll be, yeah, all right. it'll be all right. But, um. So anyway, these calabashes obviously very uh, versatile and you know used for a lot of different things. I mean, for goodness sakes, if you can use it for a motorcycle helmet, uh, <laughs> you, you know you can you can smoke tobacco out of it. Right, so right. Uh, eventually, that's uh, you know what what folks started doing. And uh, commonplace, uh, which you see a lot, you know historically, is the inside of the bowl was lined with uh, meerschaum. Occasionally, you'd find porcelain, but but typically meerschaum. Um, and what that allowed was kind of a uh, cradle for the tobacco at the very top of the gourd. Um, and, and, and so the tobacco could sit there and burn, still have lots of air pulled through it. And, and the fire, the heat, uh, or, or, the, or the burning uh, tobacco actually would not have direct contact with the gourd. Interesting. And so that allowed you know, the, the gourd to be durable and uh, you know, still smoke through, but it, you know, just uh, protected it from the actual fire of the of the pipe, and likewise protected the meerschaum that was inside. Uh, right, the gourd would actually. I mean, I would imagine that. So you're actually smoking. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. That that's right. It worked both ways. So, um, but but the the calabash is fascinating, and and the reason uh, probably its most iconic, uh, you know, characteristic is the shape and. The reason it has that shape is because they they naturally took how the gourd grew, and 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 would make these pipes out of it, and they and they would select the ones that were the most, um, you know, uh, conducive to to carving a pipe. But then what they found is that as the gourd grew, they could they could actually shape the gourd as it was growing, just like if you uh, have ever grown 
uh, a vine or you know tomatoes or Pumpkins. something you, you can actually shape you know the direction that the vine grows yeah. or or even what the vegetable sometimes looks like if it's a certain kind of thing you even think of like bonsai trees and stuff like this that you can actually kind of shape as it grows and and so they would take these gourds and as it was growing they would shape it in what they figured out was the most appropriate and uh, you know, best shape to smoke a pipe out of. And so each gourd, if you smoke a calabash gourd that you buy today, brand new, uh, that is a that is a plant that has been grown in a very specific shape <laughs> on purpose uh, by painstaking labor, you know, um, and 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 meticulous, you know, care to make that very specific shape, which is just amazing to me. You're so smoking out of a plant. So that that's that's good. I was just what I was trying to figure out. So so even still today, a calabash pipe is actually the gourd on the exterior that hasn't been replaced with like a thin uh, briar or anything like that. Well, okay. So so you do because it, it is so incredibly hard uh, of a process to make these calabashes um, in the shape of the pipe, and and it's become just incredibly expensive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you think about okay, pipe. Uh, you know, smoking is uh, although we're in a huge renaissance today it's not what it was back in maybe the 50s or 60s just as far as sheer numbers go and so um you don't have as many makers now that are you know committed to uh going through all the time and labor of making these uh calabashes into the shape of pipes and so um uh, because of that calabash pipes are extremely expensive i think the last one we had in the shop was uh maybe 325 dollars a beautiful uh, Bouchocan calabash pipe, uh, speckled gourd, real light uh, gourd that had these uh, wonderful little speckles on it. It's very, very pretty, real large Meerschaum bowl. But um, you know, you're just not going to find a genuine calabash pipe hmm. uh, that's that's you know under two hundred dollars. I mean, you're just not. So, so what a lot of these folks have done is they've started to mimic this shape, but with other material. Typically, um, uh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, typically, uh, mahogany, rich mahogany. mahogany. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you, you'll have you'll have these mahogany uh, calabash pipes, which uh, obviously are carved in the same shape, but uh, you know, you just don't have to go through the painstaking process of um, you know of growing it into the specific shape. So, uh, also, you've got folks like at Briarworks, our friends up there, Pete Prevost, um, and, and those fellas. They will take. Uh, briar and carve briar into the shape of a calabash, which uh, so you've got kind of this doubly uh, cool, you know, experience of smoking a briar pipe, but also that has a Meerschaum bowl set into it. Yeah. Um, and, and some calabashes too, because of their versatility. I mean, you've got, you know, if you're not familiar with a calabash, think of this swooping shape. You've got this large opening at the very top. And, and, and the Meerschaum typically has been set inside of this, of this pipe in order to uh, you know, contain the tobacco act as this kind of carriage for the tobacco. But because of that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be Meerschaum. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes people use porcelain. Um, and, and now you've even got folks experimenting with uh, things like Morta, uh, making Morta bowls to really? go inside the briar or really? inside the gourd, which wow. is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and then also briar bowls. And so you might have a mahogany calabash, but it's got like a briar bowl set inside uh, you know, and again, these are the, we've seen the pipe transition from being called a calabash because it's the plant into kind of being called uh, calabash because it's just the, it, the the name has been associated with the shape, obviously. Yeah, and I mean, like you know, for if you're still not kind of picturing this, I mean, it's the classic Sherlock Holmes pipe. Now, yeah, Sherlockians yeah. will will run you know rush to explain that of course that was not actually Sherlock's classic pipe. That's right. However. It is kind of the most iconic imagery when you think of Sherlock Holmes. He's got that very large, uh, long calabash pipe that kind of swoops up. And, you know, you talked about the insert. It's almost like the Meerschaum is just kind of pluming out of the pipe That's right. uh, around the actual gourd itself. Now, I'm curious because, you know, you think about Meerschaum, you think about uh, uh, Morta as well as being very breathable and, you know, yeah. with the porous and everything. So to have it where it's actually inside the pipe, but like, uh, encased in something else, even a gourd, right. do you actually lose, like, is it a different smoking experience from that standpoint? It, it, it is a different smoking experience. And, uh, I, 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 I always call it more of a, uh, airy, uh, 
an airy pull. So think, huh. you know, a lot of times when you smoke a pipe and, you know, I always try to get new pipe smokers to sit down with me for at least five minutes and let me show them kind of how to, how to pack their pipe and light it and tamp it to keep it lit and all these kind of things. But, and a lot of times I, I describe, you know, how you, when you pack your pipe, the kind of a uh, little bit of resistance that you want when you pull on the bowl, just to feel like there's something in the chamber. Um, it, a lot of times with the calabash, you're not going to get that uh, because there's just there's just so much empty air in the in the pipe, and so uh, you know you're you've got this large vacuum, this large chamber of of air, and so they they just smoke extraordinarily cool. They, they, it's it's one of the coolest smokes out there. I mean whether it's a, you know, Meerschaum pipe or a Morta or a church warden, like there's just something about a Calabash because of its, um, you know, its structure. Uh, there, it's so exposed to air that it's just, it's just a cool, it's just a cool smoke. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, so as the tobacco of course burns in the, in the chamber, uh, which is, you know, typically traditionally, uh, you know, Meerschaum, it will, the, the smoke uh, goes through the rest of the pipe, which is just a gourd, super breathable. It's just a very thin-walled plant, you know, uh, and then eventually uh, exits into your mouth. And and by that time, has uh, you know gone through a lot of mileage, and uh, you know, it's just is just cool and comfortable. Very cool, man. Yeah. All right, so I'm I'm curious. Do you have you personally? Do you now or have you ever <laughs> <laughs> smoked a calabash pipe? I have not. I have not actually. Yeah, I've got I've got to get one. It's one of those that I don't have in my rotation yet. But um, but I have never I have well, I, I have smoked one before. I've just I've never owned one. Oh, OK. Yeah. Gotcha. But, but I have I have smoked one. But so, yeah. you know, I, I do occasionally see them in the shop. Now, it's not necessarily yeah. one that, uh, you know, you you. you that you tend to have, I guess, in, in kind of a mass quantity. Yeah. You know, it, because there's such significant purchases and because it's um not the most practical pipe, you know, e e <laughs> even more than a church warden. Right. Calabashes are just, uh, they're just, they're just not practical pipes. I mean, you're, this is a big plant that you're smoking out of. It uh, is clumsy and uh, has different pieces to it that other pipes don't normally have. And so, um, you know, a lot of times like Meerschaums, you'll see them put into cases, leather, leather, uh, hard, hard bound cases that will kind of protect them and things like that. But um, it, as cool as they smoke, they're just not practical. So a lot of times, uh, and, and because they're so expensive, we'll just mm. carry them uh, more around the holidays and things like that. But uh, but you'll you'll find plenty of people out there that uh, make them and sell them. Um, you know, although they're just uh, they're not nearly as common as they used to be, so they're they're much more pricey. Uh, one thing too, I love. Occasionally, you'll find a calabash where there there's actually been someone um, that has carved into the calabash gourd itself. And so you think about like. The Meerschaum pipes where folks have carved into the Meerschaum, uh, a lot of times some, you know, some folks will even, you know, have the um, courage to, to carve into the calabash gourd itself. Really? And so they're kind of, and, and the gourd uh, typically is pretty thin walled, you know, but yeah. they're uh, even uh, take that kind of effort, even after growing this gourd to, um, you know, to, to make it even more beautiful and unique. And so, you know, these things is just, they're just a reason why they're so, they're so pricey. Uh, yeah. they're, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Ah, I see what you <laughs> did there. Uh, you know, it was interesting. There was a, a pipe carver that I'm, I'm recalling right now from Chicago, although I cannot remember his name. Yeah. Uh, it was like right before we left, you know, we were kind of walking the floor for the first time. Yeah. Uh, while we were there. We're thoroughly overwhelmed. Yeah. He was like in the back center and he had some design, like he had these, these they were all briar pipes as I recall, but they had this just intricate designs like uh, leaves carved into them. And yeah. I remember very yeah. specifically, he had a calabash shaped pipe that was almost, I want to say entirely a uh, briar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and that's what you've seen a lot, uh, because calabash has kind of become synonymous with, uh, the shape itself. Right. So we, we now see pipes that are called calabash pipes that are, are not made of gourd, have never been made of gourd, but, but also are, you know, don't have the components that a, calabash pipe has you think of calabash pipes as having you know the chamber that's separate from the the wood or the or the plant that makes up the pipe but um calabash has just kind of become a shape of its own mm. where it's just you can kind of have this deep curve uh pipe and um and and it's a calabash pipe and so uh you know i, I think the best known one that we've carried here at the squire is uh one by brebia which is gorgeous gorgeous pipe i think they retail for uh, maybe 225 or something. They typically will have kind of a, a silver mount 
uh, like a military style mount oh, yeah, on them. Yeah. But but then they're just all made of briar, uh, no uh, separate parts or anything, just a very deep kind of uh, U curve. And uh, so it, it looks like a calabash, at least from a distance. Uh, and, and so they call it a calabash shape. Uh, but it doesn't have separate pieces like you would think of as a as a traditional calabash pipe. Interesting. Yeah. So a lot of cool renditions on it. Uh, I, I'd love to, you know, see more of those things out there. I think, uh, you know, even from American carvers, you've had some folks that have taken that as kind of a challenge and have gone into, um, you know, trying uh, different ways of uh, making making calabash pipes. Um, and, and even some folks have gone as far as to take horn from different animals and use the horn as kind of a calabash. Yeah. I know our friend too, our, our local pipe carver here, uh, had talked about doing that. And I think he actually even started on one, but uh, taking a horn from, you know, be it a buffalo or a, who knows what, I don't even know what animals have horns, but, <laughs> um, but well, a bull. You, you know, yeah, a, a bull. I can't imagine that you'd be able to use a deer horn. Uh, That's for, those, ha they have antlers. You, oh, well, okay. But yeah, I don't know what the difference is, but I know they have antlers. According to wild crats, I think they're the same biological component. Really? Wild Kratz is a cartoon show on uh, public broadcasting and uh, my daughter has just started getting into it. Wow. And so they're like, oh. I was wondering, I was really hoping there was some tie in to like your kids. Yes. Or <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Back on the pipes. Yes. Yes. Calabash. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah. So, you know, you will have folks use these horns and, and uh, it's very rare, but you know, and then they'll try to inlay something inside the horn and the, and, you know, so I hope to see more of that in the near future, too. Very cool, man. Yep. You know, I got to imagine Calabash Pipes is such a uh, such an iconic uh, looking pipe with with kind of that large making a statement bowl. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to sit down and smoke a Calabash, you're, you're kind of you're committing. <laughs> you know what I mean? In oh, terms yeah. Of oh, yeah. The time that you're going to put in, into that smoke. That's right. Which is great because a lot of times you want a lot. You know, you want to be able to have a big bowl that you can sit down and you can kind of go to town for a while. But, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily need a big bowl. That's right. Sometimes you need a small bowl. It's something a little more bite-sized. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, just not as time-consuming. Yeah. You know, and that's the great thing about pipes like, for example, the shortstop. By Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. <laughs> Missouri Meerschaum, of course, sponsor for this show. And the pipe they've got sponsoring this show is the shortstop tonight. That's right. Now, the shortstop is like the <laughs> it is the opposite of a calabash pipe. <laughs> I mean, like, if there were two pipes, that's more exactly different, right. I can't even imagine what they look like. That's exactly right. Shortstop, uh, a beautiful, smallish pipe. Uh, you've got a small bowl uh, on the end of a very uh, thin pencil type shank uh, with the Levat style stem at the very end. And uh, of course, the yellow. Uh, plastic that they use just really kind of sets it apart, but uh, just a very a very dainty pipe, one for a good uh, you know short smoke, and uh, and it is a short smoke. All right, so I'm going to say something, and I really I hope that, that this does not offend because I mean it's a beautiful pipe. I yeah. think that anybody, yeah, I, I really do. I, I look at it, and I'm like, man, I just I want to smoke it. Just yeah, it's so tiny. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> it looks so cute. <laughs> uh, but but when I see it, the thing that it kind of makes me think of is like the classic um, uh, snowman pipe. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I could see that. And yeah. so, like, you know, I, I feel like I want to. Yeah, add Frosty it. needs this pipe. I want to add it to my collection, but like, not necessarily because I want to like go to it as a regular smoke, but because I I feel like I need it on hand for the next time, you know, <laughs> twenty years, you know, God willing, when we actually have another snow in in Mississippi. I'll have it ready for the snowman. Well, you know, it's the same reason that people come in at Halloween and they're like, "Where's your corn cob pipes?" And I'm like, "They're right over here. They're, you know, however much." And uh, it, they're not they're not buying them because they're necessarily pipe smokers, but they but they are buying them. They're dressing up as Popeye. Yeah. And and, and if it's Halloween and and you're Popeye, you you gotta have a pipe. You gotta have a pipe, and even though the uh, they tried to take away his pipe. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. Turkeys, yeah, that's no fair. No, but i tell you what is fair, and that is the prices at Missouri Meerschaum. I'm talking about some really quality pipes for a really fair price. you got to check it out if you go to uh, Missouri Meerschaum's website, corncobpipes.com. Uh, really, really great. And uh, hey, you know what? We want to give a big thanks to them. And one of the best ways that you can give a big thanks to Missouri Meerschaum is this week, after you're listening to this, go into your drawer, go into your uh, cellar, wherever it is that you keep your pipes. Yep. Grab your favorite Missouri Meerschaum and take a picture with it. Uh, tweet that into us at Squire Radio. We'll retweet that out. It's a great way to help uh, show your love and support for Missouri Meerschaum as they have been helping us and showing us love and support for this show. All right, guys, we've got a pipe question of the week. Bo, you're really good at what you do. Can I just say that? Really? Thank you. You're really good at what you oh, do. Appreciate that. There's your there's your pat on the head. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. 
Pie Question of the Week this week is brought to us by Greg Bolin. Yeah. Now, Greg uh, has written us a, a wonderful Pipe Question of the Week that I think a lot of people can actually uh, relate to. I think a lot of especially mm -hmm. uh, newer pipe smokers can, and even some of us who've been in it in a while. Uh, you'll, you'll hear what I mean. Uh, here's his question. He says, I have a question about the taste of the tobacco. I love the different smells, but I cannot tell a difference in taste. I was thinking about the difference in food with being under uh, a taster, uh, or a super taster. Being an under taster or a super taster. Being a, yeah. yeah, thanks. Being an under taster or a super taster. My wife says I am an under taster, which is why I put hot sauce on everything to bring out more flavor that I can taste. So my question is, is there anything I can do to enhance the flavor of tobacco? Love the show, guys. Slowly getting my brothers uh, hooked on the podcast. You've helped me find joy in uh, smoking my pipe. And for all of that, I am thankful for you. So, Greg, thank you so much Man, for that pie question. Yeah, wonderful question. Uh, you know, that's interesting. I, I've never really thought about until this question, uh, you know, kind of the salt and pepper of the pipe world. You know, I mean, that's something that, uh, you, you know, you add add something oh, like, yeah. you know, steak sauce or, uh, you know, in his case, uh, hot sauce, you know, to, to a dish to bring out more flavor. And, uh, you know, I think that's where uh, the custom blend kind of comes into play. You know, uh, you, you've probably tried... Uh, you know, typically newer pipe smokers try uh, a lot of different aromatic tobaccos, yep. and and we love aromatic tobaccos. And some of them, uh, the flavors are more pronounced than others. But uh, I have likened it before to uh, drinking a flavored coffee. Uh, a lot of times, it's you know, you smell the coffee and you smell, let's say, like hazelnut or you know, blueberry or whatever the coffee's flavored like. But then you drink it, and it just kind of tastes like hot coffee, you know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes tobaccos can be similar in that way, uh, particularly if you're newer to it, because, you know, your palate just didn't train to pick up a lot of those nuances of flavor. Uh, I, I think more of the nuances are going to come from, um, you know, non-aromatic tobacco that have, you know, a variety of very specific leaves in there that, um, that you're, you're tasting the flavor of the actual leaf rather That's than good. the casing. Um, and, and so, but, but a lot of times, you know, if you're a new, uh, smoker, you'll try these aromatic tobaccos and, um, and, and they smell incredible. And the, you know, when you smell them in the jar or in the tin, um, and then also when you burn it and, and, and the room note of the tobacco is just exquisite. Um, but then you just taste kind of this, uh, in, in your mouth, you just kind of taste heat, <laughs> you know, or, or maybe just kind of a mellow, mild sweetness or something. Right, right, yeah. Uh, and that varies from tobacco to, ba to tobacco. And I think that, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is understandable. So, uh, you know, I think that's where the beauty of blending your own and just trying a whole bunch of different stuff as well uh, comes into play because a lot of tobaccos are, um, are, are just very different. I, I think the one that broke it open for me well, two actually that broke it open for me was um, one of our blends here at the Country Squire called Cornishman. Uh, Cornishman is a uh, English blend. It was the first English blend I ever smoked, and it was one of those that just that kiss of Latakia on there opened up all these flavors that I I wasn't looking for before in a pipe tobacco. And and I think when I realized kind of the options that were there because of what Cornishman had to offer. I started recognizing more and more, you know, what some of these different, uh, what my tongue was experiencing, but didn't maybe necessarily have the, um, you know, ability to, uh, you know, describe or something. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. And, and and then the next time that happened and, and what really pushed me over the edge was um, uh, my first tin of Frogmorton. And Frogmorton, of course, we talk about McClellan tobacco all the time on the show and, and Frogmorton in particular. But, um, you know, Frogmorton, it's one of those tobaccos that it's kind of a gateway tobacco. <laughs> you know, you see the beautiful right. artwork on the can and, you know, you, uh, you hear things about it, you read all this stuff on the forums about it and everything. And, and if you're a new pipe smoker, it, it, a lot of times it's, uh, it's someone's first, uh, non aromatic tobacco that they try. And, and I would really encourage, you know, folks that have never, uh, stepped into a non aero to, to try Frogmorton. I think it'll kind of challenge your palate a little bit, but also uh, open your eye up to a lot of different flavors that are there. And um, I think if you, as you step into that more, you'll start to pick out more and more flavors. And then as you come back to the aromatics that you've known and loved before, your palate will be almost retrained enough to pick up stuff there 
uh, in a in a new way. So um, you know, keep trying a bunch of stuff. Smoke your tobacco slow and as cool as possible. It's the best way to get flavors out of it. And uh, you know, if if push comes to shove and you just need to experiment some more and start mixing some stuff together to make your own, then uh, you know, I think that's a great way to to find the right taste for you. Yeah, I'm. I, I think I want to challenge you. I, I think, do it. Bring I think, it. I think that uh, you know, if you've listened to this podcast for for even just a few episodes, you know that John David Cole has probably one of the most like uh, experienced and diverse palates in the tobacco world. I mean, like it's it's insane to hear him describe some of these tobaccos, and some of the rest of us are kind of like, really, you got that out of this? <laughs> okay. Here, I, I, here's what, what does would, a nougat taste like? All right, all right. I don't know. <laughs> here's what I would challenge. Um, Perhaps John David Cole should come up with the hot sauce equivalent of a tobacco flavoring yeah, type that's, experience. That's fair. Yeah. You know, like, or like, you know, maybe, maybe we need a salt and pepper type of blend to help bring a little something extra, a little, little comeback sauce, a little, uh, comeback little sauce. Tabasco, yeah. if you will. You know, what, what, what would that be like to sprinkle into your tobacco? Maybe you purchased a tin and it wasn't great and you just need a little something extra. I challenge Kick it up a notch. Bam. I challenge you, John David Cole, okay. to come up with whatever that emerald esque bam is gonna be for uh, for pipe tobacco. It might just be a fistful of Latakia. I don't know. <laughs> but well, yeah, maybe we could can work on that. Yeah. Something to uh, you know, take to um, you know, tobaccos that just aren't quite doing it for you, or maybe you don't appreciate the flavors of and uh how to make it palatable or or you know, enjoyable. That'd yeah, be awesome. I, I, yeah, I like that. I think that's 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 worthy. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, great question. The A1 steak sauce of the tobacco world. <laughs> <laughs> great question, Greg. Thank you so much for sending that in. And hey, if you've got a pipe question, you can send them in. Uh, CSR at potisteri.com. All right, quick five questions. Ow! All right, so this is continuing on from Dan uh, Schultz, who sent this in to us uh, a couple weeks ago. We've been combing through them. Uh, last week, I think it was kind of like uh, piracy and Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, today, fun combinations. Yeah, today it's food for thought. Now, some of these I, I believe we've done before, although okay. maybe maybe not. Some of these we have, some of these we haven't. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, bring them. Jelly or jam? Uh, jam. Now, no, okay. Does jam is jam the one that has all the stuff in it? That's preserves, right? Well, but no, there's still preserves. There's still there's a difference between jelly and jam in that I think jam still has like seeds in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and jelly, I think it doesn't. Like it just has right. It looks it, like jello. Whichever one has like all the the junk in it, that's the one I like. Yeah, I'm with I, you. I, I, I like that one. Like I, yeah. I, I think, I think that's jam. Raspberry jam. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go with you on that one. Yeah. As well. Uh, crunchy peanut butter or smooth peanut butter? Crunchy, smooth. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. There's something. There's something weird about the texture. I, I like peanut I think, butter yeah, to be peanut butter to actually be butter, right? Yeah. yeah. I think for me, that's that's the part of the fun is the texture of the crunchy peanut butter. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I was one of these kids that uh, you know. It, it, ate very strange things as a child. <laughs> and so when I get to school, I would, I loved uh, the crunchy texture so much that I would actually ramp it up and I would take my, <laughs> I would take my peanut butter and jelly sandwich apart and then put uh, Lay's potato chips on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then close it back up and crunch it down. And then it, I wasn't just eating peanut butter and jelly. I was eating peanut butter and jelly with Lay's potato chips inside of it. And so it, it was this disgusting, beautiful, crunchy wonder and I may or may not still do that today. And that does sound uh, <laughs> interesting. I, my wife does do this thing where she takes pecans and puts those in a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. So it's smooth peanut butter, but there's pecans. For some reason, I like that, but That's I don't like nice. crunchy. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, jambalaya or gumbo? Gumbo. Gumbo all the way. Yeah. Uh, especially my gumbo, which is, by the way, award-winning. Award-winning. It That's is right. award-winning. I did add that to my Twitter handle, by the way. Oh, you should. I did. Yeah. 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 It's a badge of honor. All right. Now, this is, this is a tough one. M&Ms or gummy bears? Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go with M and M's. I love chocolate, but I mean gummy bears are incredible. But I I think I'm gonna have to go with M and M's. I'm gonna go with you on that. Yep, M and M's. Uh, it's it, you know actually I was having some uh, some classic old school M and M's the other day. Okay, and I hadn't had M and M's in a long time. Like I you know I, you get to a certain age, 
And you just don't eat candy all that much. No, you don't. You know, you eat a lot of unhealthy things way too much. Right. But you don't really eat candy all that much. Well, it's I don't bump into it as much as I used to. It's right there I, at the checkout counter at the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, maybe maybe so. And you 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 can get it if you want to, but you're like, no, nah, that's not healthy. Let me just go and you know slam this beer and eat this bacon and stuff. <laughs> you know, like w- the weird things when you, when you're an adult, you're like, this candy is unhealthy. But right. so thou will eat all of this way worse unhealthy. Oh, it's stuff. way worse stuff. Right. 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 And uh, it's crazy. So. Uh, M and M's. Okay, uh, chocolate, perfect candy crunch. M and M's. Let me ask this: Do you prefer regular M and M's or peanut M and M's? Man, I, I'm a peanut M and M guy. It depends on, like, you say that, and I guess I would go for peanut because you feel like you're getting more bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, a, there's an extra filling. Like, you get more full from the peanut being involved in the process. It's a larger, um, you know, candy snack, but. At the same time, like there's just something classic about just old school uh, M and M's, man. I love the stuff we talk about on the show. Yeah, and some people don't. <laughs> uh, and then finally, pulled pork or brisket. Pulled pork. I'm a pulled pork. I love brisket. I love brisket. Okay, yeah. don't get me wrong. As a native Texan, like brisket is near and dear to my heart. But give me a pulled pork sandwich mm-hmm. any day of the week. Yep, yep, yep. You're exactly right. I'm right there with you. Pulled yep. pork, sprinkle in some nice uh, barbecue. Or some uh, coleslaw. Spicy even. barbecue. A little coleslaw on the side. Yeah. That sounds great. Sounds wonderful. And you know what else sounds wonderful? This Pipe Life. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> That's This Pipe Life, which is our sponsor, final sponsor for this episode. Yeah. Uh, first, of course, big thanks to Dan for sending in those quick fire questions. If you've got quick fire questions, please send them in, csrpotisteri.com. Or you know what? Maybe we need to start a, uh, a quick fire questions thread in This Pipe Life because this thispipelife.com right. is the premier pipe community on the internet space. They've got the uh, the pipeline, which is their forums. Uh, you know, it's it's one of these things where this is obviously a community that's been built with a lot of love. You've heard us talk about it for several episodes now. That's right. And uh, if you haven't signed up, you absolutely should. And, uh, and this is why. When you go in, you get such an experience that... I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of times when you're kind of surfing the world of the pipe, the pipe world online, you kind of think the '90s called and they want their website. <laughs> Just being honest. That being said, there's a lot of great websites out there that are doing some amazing things in the pipe community. That's right. And this pipe life is one of them that's even taken it to the next level. So that's right. We that's strongly right. Strongly encourage you head over to thispipelife.com, register yourself today, and you know what? I'm committing to it right now. We're actually going to start a quick fire questions thread in. Uh, the uh, the pipeline for that's this a great idea. Com. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So uh, y'all head over there, send in your quick fire questions, and uh, we'll be pulling from those for next week's episode. Super vibrant community. We look forward to seeing y'all on there. Absolutely. Listener feedback. All right, man. So listener feedback tonight. We've got some great tweets that are rolling in. Yeah, these are fun, <laughs> dude. All right, pull, you, you got to make reference. I know it's more of a visual thing, but but yeah. see what John just tweeted. Yeah, with? John tweeted in. You know, we talked about when growing the gourds in the shape of of, of a pipe. You know, with the calabash gourds. Uh, these. Uh, you know, John tweeted in pic- a picture of watermelons that are grown into a square. You know, basically this watermelon was put in a square mold and then grown. And then before you know it, you have a square watermelon. <laughs> so, yeah, he says uh, watermelons are really easy to shape uh, as we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it looks, uh, yeah, like little cubed uh, watermelon. Somebody else who uh, gets a shout out tonight is uh, Pappy Badger. Uh, I guess he's coming after you, Pappy Joe. We got another Pappy who's <laughs> tweeting in with a live show. Uh, Pappy Badger rocking a uh, a pretty pretty amazing beard and a really awesome pipe. Do you do you know what kind of pipe that is? Uh, let's see here. One of the things I love is uh, for the live show. Those of you that tune in and actually take a picture of yourself. And, yeah, that's uh, a Nording, if I'm not mistaken. It looks that's like a Nording. A Nording. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're in a we're in a uh, Chicago Bears T-shirt there. Duh, is, uh, Bears, which is good. Duh, Bears. Younger listeners won't get that. Um, Jason Cooper uh, is actually right now. He's walking in downtown Ocean Springs and uh, tuning in from there. So I uh, hope you're having a, a lovely walk. If you made it back home, then. Uh, Hope you're enjoying uh, your evening after your walk. <laughs> and of course, Pappy Joe actually did. Uh, he did take a picture. He's got a, a beautiful calabash pipe. Yep. Uh, that is, sir, you are rocking that pipe. <laughs> uh, Maduro Maniac says, in ancient times, Hawaiians did use gourds for warrior helmets. If you're crazy to wear one in battle, uh, I'll run away from you. <laughs> so, yeah, I think if you if you are crazy enough to wear a gourd as a helmet uh, in battle, uh, yeah, I'd... I'd probably don't want any part of a, a fight with you. Love this feedback, man. Yeah, the great thing is with the live show, you can tune in, you can tweet us during the show. We want to try to get more and more of that live feedback and sharing that actually on the podcast itself. You know, we got we also got a, a comment that was sent in from Piper Dave on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me 
pulled up. As you uh, pull up your screen. Yeah, my phone, uh, my, my screen keeps, I guess Apple wants me to save electricity. Yeah, Apple. Uh, yeah, so uh, from Piper Dave on YouTube, he says, This is great. Now the Country Squire Radio has its own YouTube channel. Subscribe right away. Keep up the hard work, gentlemen. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, Bo and John David. You guys rock. Man, well, thank you so much, Piper Dave. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in for the live show, sending in that live feedback. We greatly appreciate it. You know, there's a lot of ways to send feedback. You can actually uh, go onto iTunes and write us a review there. That's a wonderful way to send feedback. Uh, we love getting those Facebook messages, those tweets sent throughout the week. Um, as I mentioned before, I will actually be in Miami uh, it, by the time this podcast goes live. So if you happen to be out in the Miami area, um, be uh, be following us on Twitter and uh, and let us know where a good place to uh, find a, uh, a good pipe shop is. I actually typically, whenever I travel, I'll go to the Facebook page and ask the group yeah. and uh, get some great recommendations there. Preferably one near a Pokemon gym. Yeah, that would be ideal. That, you know, if you've got, now, yes. I, I, let me let, forget what I said, what he said. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I want to know. Um, but yeah, so, so send us in that feedback. We love getting that in. Hey, um, let me also, if you don't mind me kind of taking a little bit of liberty since you mentioned the Pokemon thing. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a uh, podcast I've mentioned before, the Pokemon Go podcast. If you do happen to be playing that game, do me a favor. Uh, head over to iTunes while you're writing Country Squire Radio Reviews. Write us a review for the Pokemon Go podcast. You know, they've got a new team over there. They're finding their footing. I think they're doing a great job. They're going to take it in great places. But, you know, being the, the Pokemon world, this is really bizarre to me. There's a lot of haters out there. <laughs> no, there, there are. We, we got a lot of flack for being a quote-unquote Gen 1-ers, as in we, we played the old games, but we haven't been playing for the last oh, 15 years or really? something like that. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know it was either. But, uh, you know, you know the, the internet, one of the, the things, uh, John David, that you and I have enjoyed is is the good side of the internet. We've gotten so much positive That's feedback, right. so much love. That's right. And uh, and so it's, I, you know, as these guys have, have been kind of uh, falling into uh, uh, their way and, and finding their, their stride, uh, head over there, just write them, a, get them a good five-star review let them know that um, if you like Pokemon Go and you want to see a good podcast, just let them know. Give them an attaboy and, uh, and help support them and what they're doing. Uh, if, if nothing else, then as a personal favor to me. Uh, also, we want to encourage you to uh, check out the show on the Satchel Podcast Player. That's right. We know a lot of y'all do already. Actually. Absolutely. Yeah. We really appreciate that. You know, the feedback that you guys are sending in, you can actually uh, tweet that into uh, me directly if you want. You don't have to text message John David, although well, I know he's... You know, <laughs> Danny, Danny had some good feedback. He just it was the easiest way to do it. At, at the no, time. it was great right. feedback. It was actually a feature that we were uh, currently in development. So I was I was happy to see that. Yeah, that was really cool. No, we we love that, guys. You y'all have been so supportive of uh, everything that uh, that we've done here uh, in all the various uh, uh, fun, crazy, weird worlds that we live in. Uh, you guys have Gosh, been so no great kidding. to support us. So we. We really appreciate you. Uh, hey, if uh, if you'd like to tune into the live show, we want you to. You can tune in at CountrySquireRadio.com on Monday nights. Uh, that is typically at 6.30 Central Time, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. Uh, we always love for those that are able to tune in uh, and, uh, and join us for this experience. Of course, we also love getting those tweets in both during the live show and throughout the week. You can tweet into the sh uh, show, which is at Squire Radio. You can tweet me, which is at The Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. Of course, all this contact information and more can be found at Country Squire Radio. Dot com. Dot com. Man, what was that? I don't know, but it came from something. Yeah, no, it, it was a commercial. commercial. It was a commercial. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that takes me back. But, I, <laughs> but, but but it's like it starts me back, but it doesn't actually land. It does. You never land because you don't dot know what it's from. Com. It's like when someone, they, they hum just the right thing, and I think of that old Red Robin commercial. Red Robin. Yum. Um. <laughs> <That'd be harmonized laughs> yeah, we, might, we might have a barbershop thing going here. I like that. Seriously? Because, <laughs> you know, I've wanted to do that. You know, I've wanted to do that, right? See, I, was, I, was, hey, hey, I always like to... When I'm up here, you go up here. I can't hang, dude. All right, man. I can't hang. Well, hey, let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in the live show. I know that, once again, tonight was kind of a uh, a later night as we've been working through some technical issues. Guys, I don't know what's been going on. I really wish that I could tell you that the fix that I put in tonight is going to be a universal fix, and that means that next time we'll be on time. I, I cannot guarantee that. I want to, but I can't because there are the devils in the machine. So, bad devil machine <laughs> maybe we need to call the priest back i don't yeah, know yeah yeah all right that's uh, instead of a blessing next time we'll have an exorcism <laughs> of the uh of the technology <laughs> yes yeah <sir. laughs> there might be some validity to that all right guys. man but thanks for bearing with us y'all we we love and appreciate you a bunch have a great night